97% of kids go to school at the elementary school, their primary school as lateral thinkers. And that's kind of creative thinkers. But by the time they leave that primary school, it's down to 43%. And that's all of kids. And so that basically is showing what you're just discussing on how we're really keeping this kind of prescriptive linear thinking. Um, and we're told that's correct. Now, if you're not dyslexic, you kind of work for that. I mean, you'll lose that lateral thinking, but it works for you. But if you're dyslexic, you really struggle. So how is the education system failing? And like, how, wh what are you doing at the moment? Because I know you're doing so much and I just love to kind of dive into this to kind of like tr change that belief, but also change the system of how we are teaching our kids at school. I think there's two things we need to do. Firstly, we have got a system all around the world that is measuring the wrong things and does need to change. But we also have dyslexic children in every single school system around the world. So the first thing we need to do is level the playing field. So help teachers to understand that these kids, bright kids, there's one in five kids in every classroom that think differently and need some help to fit into a system that basically is not shaped for them. And that's something we're doing with free teacher training. It's video based. It's brilliant for parents as well. So um, that's about educating and trying to, to get people to understand that tests and things are not going to, they're, they're not fit for purpose for anybody, arguably, but certainly not dyslexics. And then we do need to change the system. And I actually think that artificial intelligence is going to be a massive, massive um, wake up call for educators because artificial intelligence was asked to take the LSATs and the SATs exams, all of the high stakes exams that you take in the US to get into colleges and it aces every single one. So arguably, we're now testing young people and measuring them and their, their life chances of going to the college, college of their choice, is being measured by tests that artificial intelligence can do. What needs to happen is we need to stop measuring children with these standardised tests because the world doesn't need standardised minds. It needs minds that think differently. So the whole way we view intelligence and the whole way that we test intelligence needs to change. And it's easier to change that in the workplace because if you have a job to fill, you know what talents you need to fill that job. So if we look at talent-based hiring, that's quite easy to do. And then we need to look at how we transform that into education. So I think that we're working very closely with businesses like EY and Microsoft and other Randstad and other huge organizations to look at the, the school to work pipeline. Cause at the moment that what's coming out of school and, and that the skills that we're measuring are not the skills that the workplace are looking for. So I'm hopeful change will come and will come soon. Cause Ken Robinson was talking about that. How many years ago? But, you know, there's a really, really sad story about that. When Ken Robinson, when Tony Blair's government came into power, Ken Robinson was brought in as an advisor to the Labour government. And he was asked to consult on all the things that needed to happen to help create these amazing, innovative, creative minds. And he came up with all sorts of advice and guidelines, which basically almost everything got shelved. So, you know, I think he was before his time. I think the time for change is now. So let's hope in the UK when we get a new government, which we will, I probably will soon, or even if we get the same one back in again, who knows, but let's hope that they'll look at the future and really see we can't still keep educating kids with a completely antiquated system. But I think power is for teachers as well. Teachers don't like the testing system. And I think there's there, change is coming. There's definitely change coming. Well, I hope so. And I think, you know, when you just mentioned about the creativity and entrepreneurs, I think this also applies to anybody who is neurodivergent, right? It's people that have ADHD and are told they're super naughty at school and they're disruptive. So they actually just kind of give up learning or autism. There's so many different traits of how we are heavily stigmatized if we suffer with neurodivergency. And if kids do end up kind of getting through the schooling system and sadly like a lot of them don't but the ones that do can go on to do incredible things and that's when people flourish and I think just hearing that on what you're saying you know it's like when people escape the schooling system that's when they feel that they can kind of spread their wings and and figure out who they are and I know that this is something that's so as much as to me is to you when we spoke earlier about the passion you have for this, you know, I can see the passion. And you know, you, you're basically your mission is by 2030 is to not exist. 
Fest made by Dyslexia because you will have had made this such a big impact in the world and put in these systems that you don't need to exist because your message is so clear and so loud that actually it's not useful anymore because we all know about it. And I think that is so inspirational to hear, but I can feel that comes from like a deep passion of you having to fight this kind of in the early years of having dyslexia. So I'd love for you to kind of tell me and our listeners your story, because I think these moments of when people figure out they're dyslexic and they're heard and they're seen, is quite pivotal for every dyslexic. Yeah, I think it definitely is. It's definitely what, what drives me. So I, I started at a very um, strict, traditional girls' school, um, and it was it was a private school, and it was one of the schools that fed all of the top girls' schools, secondary schools. Um, and I was an unmitigated disaster at school. I'm not a particularly shy person. I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert, but I'm not particularly shy. But school made me feel like I just wanted to sit at the back of the class and not talk to anybody and avoid everything because I couldn't do what the other kids could do. So I, I, I really struggled. I struggled with maths was my biggest, biggest failing. But it was a constant. I mean, I, I was mad about animals and my science teacher was also my maths teacher and basically told me that I should give up or, you know, forget any idea of wanting to be a vet because I wasn't clever enough. So it was like every day I would go in there and it would be a negative. And eventually my mum and dad got called into the, um, into the school's office and I was told that, or they were told that I wasn't going to pass any exams. So basically I needed to find somewhere else to go to school because it was a waste of time me being there. And I can remember my mum and dad just being, just being so cross because they knew that I was perfectly bright. I just wasn't very good at exams and wasn't very good at school. I've got an older brother who is very dyslexic. Um, and he's also super successful. He started Virgin Mobile with Richard Branson, which is how I met Richard. But my mum and dad said, look, okay, we're just going to take Kate out and send her to the same school that, that my brother was at. So I then literally, my life was transformed overnight from feeling that I was stupid, from having terrible anxiety about, about school and life and everything that comes with, with a, a really bad experience at school. I was sent to a school that just transformed my life. And I can remember going into the, to meeting the headmaster because it, uh, it was a school that is a mainstream school, but entry was on interview. They didn't care about your exams. It was about whether they thought you had something to offer and were the right fit. And I remember saying to the headmaster, look, I'm, I'm not very good at exams. I'm not very smart. I'm not going to be able to pass any of the tests that you give me. But I really like the school and I really wanted to come because it was just incredible. And he said to me, well, we don't care about exams. Here. He said, we can teach you to read. We can teach you all the things that you need to learn. And we can even get you to pass the exams that you need to pass. He said, that's not what it's about. It's about what's your passion? What are you good at? What do you really love to do? And he said, because that's what will make you successful in life. And that's really what my education was from there on in. It was, it was looking at different ways of thinking and different skills and different talents and then getting the, the support. So that, that was life changing for me. And when I had my first son, it was really clear to me that he was dyslexic because he would, at age three, he knew the name of every single dinosaur. Um, he could tell you where they were a herbivore or a carnivore. Uh, he could tell you everything about them, but he could barely write his name. He had no interest in reading and he was super creative, loved music, really artistic. So I went into the school and sort of said, look, I know he's dyslexic. I'm pretty sure he's dyslexic. It runs really strong in my family. So can you just keep an eye on it and make sure that you test him when it's necessary? And they, they said, oh yeah. And of course we know all about dyslexia. Don't worry about it. We'll sort of see what happens. Um, but Ted, Ted went from being a really brilliant, creative, wonderful, outgoing little child, um, to coming home from school one day. And I was reading him a story and this will make me cry. So I apologize in advance, but I was reading him a story, his bedtime story. And he said to me, mommy, what can I do to not wake up in the morning? Sorry, because he said, he said, I hate school and I just don't want to go into school. I just want to stay asleep, which is just as a parent. That's just the worst thing you can ever hear a child say. So I went back into the school the following morning and said, look, Ted is dyslexic. I know he's dyslexic. Will you test him? And they did test him eventually after I put up. I mean, they, we were being told that he's just not very bright. He's a little bit disruptive. He's a naughty kid. All the things you get 
labelled at. And then as soon as he was identified, he got the support he needed and um, he, he, he started to do better. We didn't stay at that school, actually. We moved and sent him to um, my old school. And um, yeah, but that's where my journey started. I then I trained in dyslexia uh, and that's really where my mission began because we could afford to take Ted out to send him to a school he wanted to go to and most people can't and it is you know it's still a case that 80 percent of dyslexic kids are leaving school unidentified so it's just so important that we change this this stigma and make sure kids are picked up you know Ted is flourishing he's his love back when he was five years old was music and performing. And he now, um, he writes, he's an art recording artist and he's got a huge successful career writing stuff for music and film. So he's living his dream and his passion. And my other younger son, who's also dyslexic, we didn't pick up his dyslexia till he was a little bit older. Um, cause he kind of was at a good school that did the font, got phonics and he got reading and everything, but it's his, difficulty is sort of processing speeds. Um, but with extra time, he is now, he passed all his exams. He was actually an A-grade student um, and he's a copywriter. So he's doing what he loves. He loves words, loves doing all of that stuff. So they've both lent into their strengths. And I think my my mission really is just to help everybody to understand that they are brilliant and they just need to really lean into that and, and not feel the stigma that we all feel. And kids should never, no child should be made to feel like my child felt. That's just wrong. Thanks so much for listening. To hear the full episode, there's a link in the description.